and welcome to episode 42 of the Insider's Guide to Project Cars 2, where today we are going to be taking a look at multi-class racing. Now, multi-class racing is a little bit different to your standard type of racing, mainly because there is more than one class racing on the circuit in one given race, hence the name multi-class racing. Now, the different car classes used in multi-class races tend to have some kind of performance difference between each class, somewhere usually between the region of 1 to 5, potentially more than 5 seconds per lap, just in order to spread the classes out a little bit, and that kind of creates a rather interesting racing dynamic, also adds an awful lot to strategy, and because of that, it is a little bit different and there is kind of some unwritten rules to multi-class racing compared to your usual standard racing especially when it comes to lapping other drivers and especially lapping or overtaking other car classes now typically in a standard single class race whenever a driver is coming up to lap another driver the driver that is being lapped will be shown a blue flag and they are obliged to move out of the way of that faster driver without impeding them in multi-class racing though, things are a little bit different. Yes, they still get shown a blue flag and they are meant to avoid impeding the faster class car, the faster driver coming through and overtaking them. However, they are not obliged to move off the racing line and move out of that faster driver's way. And in fact, that's actually usually detrimental and can cause more issues than if they were to stick to the racing line. So. The car in the slower of the two classes in any lapping situation in multi-class racing is advised to stick to the racing line and hold their line as much as possible. Now this may seem like it's actually going to impede the faster driver, but in fact the main reason why it is advised for the slower class driver to hold the racing line is because it makes them so much more predictable as to where they're actually going to be at what given point around the circuit and it makes it so much easier for the driver in the faster class car to actually make that overtake happen as quickly and as safely as possible as it's going to be the faster class car who has the much better awareness of the situation obviously they're the one who are approaching the slower class car up in front of them they can see them they can read them they can predict where they are going to converge and meet the slower class car and therefore predict and plan the overtaking maneuver to try and get past them as quickly as possible and safely as possible whilst losing as little time as possible as well. If that slower class car is deviating from their racing line, which they could do at any point, the driver going to make the pass is going to have no idea as to where they're going to go. They could be planning to pass and move to the right of the racing line and then that driver who they're trying to actually pass could also be having the same thoughts and you have then run into a situation where both cars are moving over to the right and they just it blocks the faster car and you lose time and it's obviously causing a dangerous situation there could potentially be contact so with that one of the biggest and most important things for the slower class car in any situation of being overtaken in a multi-class race you need to stay on the racing line or at least hold the line that you're on obviously if you're coming into a corner and you're in the braking zone and you're on the racing line and a faster class car approaches and comes up your inside for that upcoming corner obviously you need to give them racing room when it actually comes to turning into the apex generally what you want to do is spend as little time as possible side by side with another car to avoid losing as much time as possible now obviously that is going to mean that one of the two drivers is going to end up losing time but one driver losing a couple attempts of a second is much, much better than both drivers having to compromise their own lines and having to accommodate for another car that's kind of semi-battling them even though they're not actually fighting for position and therefore losing potentially a second if not more uh, just going through a sequence of corners side by side. It also obviously creates a very dangerous situation where there could lead to potentially contact as well and it just frustrates both drivers in that situation. So there's got to be a little bit of leeway from both drivers essentially. It means that the faster class cars are going to have to come offline but the slower class drivers also have to be aware of those faster class drivers approaching and potentially have to give up the corner if they're on the inside at the turning point. 
Now, when it comes to where and when is the safest place to pass, obviously, generally, the straights are going to be the safest places to pass another car uh, when it comes to multi-class racing. But it also depends on the actual performance differences between the classes and the cars that are racing in that multi-class race. If we were to take, for example, an LMP1 car coming up to a GTE car, Obviously, the LMP1 car has a much more powerful engine. It can reach a much higher top speed, and it also has a lot more downforce. So it's going to have better acceleration. It's going to have better top speed, which makes it very, very safe to overtake on a straight. But also, when it comes to long, fast, sweeping, high-speed corners, the LMP1 car is also going to have an advantage there and depending on the momentum and the timing there is a possibility that the LMP1 car can cleanly go around the outside of the GTE car in that long sweeping corner without impeding the GTE driver. Now obviously this can still be risky depending on the actual corner as well. Sometimes with GTE cars, they're basically they're committed to one line. Once they're on that line and once they're in the corner, there is very little that they can do to adjust their line going through that corner. So if they're already going deep, then obviously it could potentially lead to contact. So you're kind of relying and trusting on the other driver to actually hit their marks, hit their breaking point, the turning point, and actually nail the apex and be able to stick and stay on their racing line. But you as a faster class driver, if you are in the faster class driver and overtaking that GTE car, you need to get your timing right. You need to get the momentum right so that you're not coming and meeting at a convergence point, say, on the exit of the corner and end up potentially being in a position where you are going to potentially make contact with that other driver. So sometimes it's best not to go for that overtaking move and instead ease off a little bit before coming into the corner and kind of follow that GTE car through the actual turn itself but then tighten up the exit for yourself and then pass on the inside on the exit basically kind of almost like switch back on that GTE class and use the acceleration and the top speed of that car to then pass on the exit of the turn obviously it depends on the actual sequence of corners whether it's kind of a switchback chicane or whether um, it's a sweeping s bend or whether it's just a singular bend it, it entirely depends on the actual circuit and what i'd also actually recommend doing is actually trying out and understanding and learning the various different classes of the cars that are going to be in your multi-class race that will give you a much much better idea as to what the limitations are of each of the different car classes and different types of car that are involved in that race and that will allow you to have a better understanding and a better reading when approaching uh, a slower class car if you are in that faster class and also if you're in a slower class have a better understanding as what the faster class cars are actually capable of doing and then obviously when it comes to that racing and that overtaking situation you'll be able to better read the, si the situation and be able to make it safer for both the drivers involved. Now this safety aspect quite nicely leads on to the next part which is communicating your intentions with the other driver depending on whether you're in the slower class or whether you're in the faster class. But either way it's all about being clear and doing things early in order to communicate with the other driver. Now for those in the faster class cars things are going to be a little bit more difficult as you kind of you're having to read the other driver in front of you and what they're actually doing and also your actual options for communicating to them are going to be limited. One option is flashing headlights and this usually signifies that you're planning on overtaking coming into the next corner but it's also generally frowned upon and is also actually potentially dangerous as quite a few drivers actually find flashing lights uh, quite distracting and that could obviously potentially lord, uh, lead to a situation where you're frustrating the slower class driver and could potentially cause them to make a mistake or potentially lead to contact so generally it is frowned upon and it's best not to flash the lights uh, on those slower class cars so instead what you kind of have to do is just read them as best as you possibly can and then once you're actually approaching the car coming up behind them 
pulling over and out of the slipstream and into position to make an overtake as soon as possible so the other driver has the best chance and is more likely to see you moving into position to make an overtake and they, they should therefore recognize that and potentially give you the room if they deem it is safe to, uh, safe to do so. So obviously with that you do also need to be prepared to back out of making that overtaking maneuver because it is the slower class driver that has basically command of the track and the racing line and it's more down to them as to when it is the best time and the safest time for that faster class car to actually be let through. So as a slower class driver you obviously need to communicate with that faster class car as early and as soon as possible as well. If you're actually coming up to the corner in a similar situation coming down the straight and say you've got a right hander coming up before the braking zone, move over just to the right of the racing line and actually put yourself in a position that kind of clearly shows that you are in a way kind of defending the corner. Usually that should mean to the faster class driver that you don't want them to pass coming into that corner for whatever reason. Potentially there's been a spin or a crash up ahead and the slower class driver has been able to see it. However, the faster class driver may not have seen that and obviously it's not going to be safe for them to try and slip past coming into that corner with that crash there. Or it could be just something as simple as the slower class driver doesn't feel that it is safe uh, for you to pass in that next corner and doesn't want you to do so as it could impede them a lot more than potentially wait until after the corner for the next straight or another corner that follows that is probably going to be better suited for the actual overtaking maneuver itself so communicating between the two drivers is very very important and actually making sure and actually kind of following and acting accordingly due to that communication is going to make things much easier and more enjoyable when it comes to multi-class racing as it is all about the strategy managing the traffic and getting through it cleanly and as safely as possible whilst losing as little time as possible as well like i said it creates a really interesting racing dynamic and some of the most strategic and intense racing that i've experienced has come from multi-class racing as despite there being multiple different classes actually racing at the same time you are only racing the other competitors within your class. You're not racing any of the other drivers in the other classes, but they're there and they're there on track at the same time with you racing their own race, competing against the drivers in their class. So that is obviously one thing to also note as well. Don't race the other drivers in the other classes. Just focus on racing the drivers in the class that you are racing within. When it comes to the points and the results at the end of the race, all the results are split up into the individual classes. The top 10 drivers from each class get awarded championship points as well. So it's not like the overall finishing positions, you being down in the slower class where you have no chance of actually winning the race overall. It's not like you're going to miss out on any points. It is actually class-based uh, results. So you will get the championship points from there and you're only going to impede your own race and other people's races and frustrate them if you end up trying to race the other classes. Now, a lot of what I've talked about in this episode about multi-class racing is kind of a lot more applicable to actually multiplayer rather than single player. When it comes to single player, yes, things are still applicable. However, there are some slight differences as the AI will deviate from their racing line slightly to try and accommodate uh, an overtake. So try to keep that in mind and don't be too surprised if the slower class cars in a AI multi-class race kind of move from their racing line slightly and try to give up the apex of the corner. When you're in those slower class cars yourself and you're racing against AI in higher class cars, just stick to your racing line obviously keep an eye out for the ai behind you and if they do go to your inside when it comes to a corner obviously hold your line and give them the racing room that they need in order for them to actually make the corner whether they're going down your inside or whether they're going around your outside in a faster turn but other than that a lot of the stuff that we were talking about earlier on in the episode does still apply to the single player side as well so that's going to conclude it for this episode. Hopefully you learned something about 
multi-class racing or get a better understanding of how multi-class racing works. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I shall try and get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Other than that, consider subscribing to the channel if you've been enjoying the Insider's Guide series, as I very much appreciate the support that you've been giving the series and also been giving the channel recently. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching, guys. Hopefully, I shall see you in the next episode. But until then, have fun and take care.